funds for um, my organization. But what was at the heart of it was I decided to go after the middle school market uh, in America, which was highly untapped. Uh, as you said, people would generally start Model UN grade eight or nine. And I created a new revenue stream where we would train people from classes six through eight and give them an opportunity to come down, uh, you know, and, and experience Model UN, start them off early. And that actually uh, got us close to $80,000 in revenue, which, uh, you know, is what was significant when it came to uh, the opportunity that created for the rest of the club. So Shantam, uh, since you spoke about leadership, I just want to know a young view and young perspective from you. Who is a leader? The one who has maximum followers or the one who creates leader? Who is a leader? <laughs> well, honestly, uh, you know, based on my last point, which was know the audience, I'm going to say the one who creates the leader because I know how many teachers are on the phone. Um, <laughs> but, but, but that being said, I mean, you know, it really is a mix of uh, like using apathy, using sympathy, using, you know, your people skills to not, not try to differentiate yourself from them, but try to represent them through you. You know, and, and I think the, the key pitfall is people try to say, I'm, you know, above you. And, and thus I am your leader, but I, I really think leadership is about, you know, talking to people about how much you are like them rather than how much you are better than them. That's wonderful. So when young generation speaks about this, we feel that yes, there is a lot of hope. Coming back to your man journey, uh, Shantam, you turned the UCLA team from a rank which was 50-ish in school to rank nine globally. That's, that's really commendable. So what should schools, college focus on to better their program? Suppose we already have a month program running in our school. What are the key ingredients that you would like to share, which will make it a better version of the month that we used to conduct? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, it's uh, honestly like, I appreciate you calling out that statistic. UCLA used to be a, uh, in the, in the 50 to 75 ranking when I, when I first started. And then when I ended, we were, uh, rank nine globally, and it was a tremendous accomplishment, but really goes to the full team and not just me. Uh, but I do think there's three key things to focus on when you're trying to build a program, right? Um, the first one is uh, do not just select your teams based on who's the best debater or who's the best speakers. Um, debating and speaking is a talent that you can train your team members on, but uh, what happens in a lot of the cases is the best debaters tend to be people who are, you know, typically more arrogant. Typically, they like to have an outward, uh, very strong leadership personality. And sometimes that doesn't work in the UN. And you see the same people who are winning several accolades in debate and are doing really strong in speech, but can never rally the committee behind them, right? You need people who are people's Person. They should have the personality to, as I was saying, identify with their audiences. And you can teach them how to debate and how to speak in a public forum. Um, the second thing is, uh, I really think early on in your school year, you should be dedicating as many resources as you can to give an opportunity to a wide variety of students to participate. Um, typically, what I've seen is schools will only allow kind of some of the what they would call, you know, lower, um, lower level people or people who haven't proven themselves in the past to participate in their own school's model UN, where they already have a comfort zone um, and they already have known faces around them. Uh, I think that's a flawed model. I think you need to, uh, the first few conferences of the year, you need to take as many people as possible from your school. Um, so you can really test them in a real world model UN setting. Uh, and, and you can see kind of where the gaps are and where some of your specific team members can improve. And the last one I think is you need to create some kind of a framework. So I created a framework for Model UN at UCLA where um, we were essentially talking to the team about, you know, the, the most, the smallest of details, like what color jacket should you be wearing, right? Everyone's wearing black, maybe wear gray or blue. Um, same with, uh, 
when they're when they're building their crisis arcs, um, never focus on one single person because you're giving them too much importance within committee. So always have a more generalistic view, um, create a crisis diagram and show it to your crisis teams. Like we would give them these skills, you know, each team member almost like could use as a resource to then build up their model UN performance on. So I think giving a, a, a good framework uh, up, you know, front loading participation uh, throughout the year um, and then making sure that your munners aren't just the people that are also doing debate in your school are, are kind of three key factors as schools look to build their teams. That's that's really well uh, put up. You have actually given a stepwise approach. Now to tell to all the audience who is here, um, Shantam did speak about the color of your jacket and all. And Shantam and I did not coordinate. It's our jacket of the color of our jacket <laughs> is matching and we did not coordinate. <laughs> this is intuitive. <laughs> so coming to my next question, Shantam, how would you say man has helped you in your career wherever you have reached? Do you think man has a special role to play there? And how should students apply to, I mean, how should they apply to college and leverage their man experience? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, that's a great question. And, um, you know, reeling it back to my first answer, I really do think stuck with man because of how relevant it is to, you know, life after school, life after college. Um, so I think, how does it help with my career, right? So there are a few focused areas. One is, and I've stressed this a lot while during, you know, throughout this discussion is about how to work in teams, how to work with people. Um, you know, you asked a very good question about not all your views will be appreciated or supported. So, you know, colleges and companies know that, you know, even in their day to day, their students or their employees will not have all their views supported or appreciated. But, you know, seeing that you've done MUN, you can verbalize that, uh, you know, you have already gone through the ropes and you know how to work in teams where you know how to quickly pivot and, um, you know, make sure that everyone's viewpoints are, are included in the final delivery. So uh, I think that's a, that's a really good plus from doing MUN. The second thing is how to speak concisely um, and with logical structuring. As many of you who are familiar with MUN know, um, all MUN speeches are timed. You're, it's either 30 seconds or 45 seconds or a minute and a half. And Participants are expected to logically structure all their thoughts, make their key points, and provide next steps uh, in the course of those 30 seconds or 45 seconds. Um, as you know, during interviews, there's a, a lot of, you know, testing on elevator pitches because they want to know that when you do have the attention of, uh, you know, a, a particular audience, and you only have say 45 seconds or a minute with them, are you gonna be able to articulate your thoughts? And again, that is a skill that's really, are you guys still able to hear me? Yes, yes, Shantam, continue. Okay, great. Uh, so that's something that's you know, really wanted uh, by these companies. Finally, I think it's your writing skills, right? And um, it's, it's so interesting that we're doing this event with Fun to Learn. I've actually, done the handwriting workshop from fun to learn myself um, back when I was in seventh or eighth grade. And, you know, your handwriting really talks about your personality, but really there's so many written documents that you have to create. And again, you have to get teams to read it, digest it, support it. So when you show that to your companies um, and universities that you're able to write cohesively um, and coherently, uh, I think that's a, that's a skill that's really appreciated and applicable in your career oh, down yeah. the line. Wonderful. So I think in a nutshell, you have presented everything right Before when we yeah. talk about MUN and when we talk about your career also, there are so many things that you have learned, whether it's your research skill or your it's your listening skill, yeah. writing skill, speaking skill, analyzing, team spirit, leadership, critical, collaborative. I think everything is amalgamated in just one thing that is your model United Nation experience. So we have Kusum Kanwar here. She wants to raise a question. Um, Kusum, ma'am, your question, please. Hello, Kusum, Kanwar, ma'am. Yeah. Good morning, Shantam. 
and uh, Hi, good morning, morning. and uh, you know listening to you ashantam is is uh, is is really a very inspiring and to get real students um, you know or a manner out here and to listen from the horse's mouth is great we have got a lot yeah, of also around here and i can see your family they are just beaming i mean they are so proud of you <laughs> and that's that's really good and so for for people like us who are you know who have been heading schools have uh, uh, um, mm -hmm. actually gone through so many months i think i'm meeting uh, a manner or two manner after so many years who has passed uh, you know from school uh, you you know you you have touched the right things like mindfulness your collaboration uh, you know leading with empathy and uh, resilience adaptability i think this is just beautiful uh, and also uh, you know united nations being an extraordinary opportunity for students from all subjects who engage in this world so my uh, just two things which will probably help uh, uh, you know all the people listening and who have, who don't know about man or there are children who can then start preparing is uh, what are the kind of subjects like uh, because i I've, i've headed an international school uh, igcse school where we had global perspectives and that and i so always encourage children to have global perspectives one a that and secondly uh, there are lots of skills that uh, you know manners use so if you can just uh, break that down for people mm -hmm. to understand uh, you know what kind of research skills they need what, what is the negotiation skills the public speaking so to say uh, i wouldn't say debate but yes definitely argumentation and resolution writing um so that's my question thank you Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, great questions, and, and thank you so much for the kind words. Um, just a, a clarification on your first question: Were you saying what are the different subjects and topics that people can take interest in to better their skill sets? Right, like a global perspective. Okay, like I would always encourage right. children to take global perspectives. No, absolutely. I think you know that's that's really pertinent. And the great thing about Model UN, as you see it. kind of transform over the years when i started model un it was really un committees right it was you know you were either unsc you were general assembly um it was just un topics today un has become really anything model un is more a format than uh, a topic discussion area right so i've been part of so many committees that were you know financial analysis committees i've been part of you know boardroom meetings um and war based committees and so i think there's not one topic that you can get really good at but um you know i i don't want to sound like a parent but really just staying up to date on on day to day affairs right like i think newspapers are a great way to go i think um as as when i was president of model un one of the things we used to do is we used to have a general meeting every week and we would assign one person to talk to the the audience about a world event uh, right it could be it could be a financial event it could be a, a humanitarian event whatever it might be and then at the end pose a question that clearly can be debated on right it, it the question shouldn't be something like should should you know developed countries give humanitarian aid to underdeveloped countries because everyone is going to say yes um it should be a, a little and and this is where i think educators come in too you can collaborate with the students to come up with topics um that will ignite the participants to really come up with a point of view right based on the uh, delivery that was just or, or the presentation that was just provided um uh, and i think that's one way you can really create well-rounded students in in terms of your in terms of your student development um and and skills i really think you you covered most of them right like you talked about research i think one of the one of the really uh, teeth gruntling points about uh, model un is you never know how much is enough right and you always you always think that others around me are more researched than i am uh did, could i have looked up these military codes and you know seen more smarter in committee or um should i you know if i'm china should i learn up uzbekistan's policy or you know should i just learn up china's policy like there's it 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 is really a frustrating exercise at first and to that i will always 
um, advise people to start with just the general topic, um, you know, without thinking about what country they're in um, or, you know, what their specific perspective should be. They should just learn about the topic as a fact-finding mission, um, just so they're more aware at the end of the conference, right? And then you factor in, there's different techniques, right, for research. You can, you can see which side U.S. is on, and then typically, based on your country, if it has good trade relations with U.S., you will be on the same side as U.S., or if it doesn't have trade relations with U.S., has trade relations with Russia or China, you'll be on the opposite side of whichever side U.S. is on, right? So there are hacks that way that can help you uh, research your country's stance on it. But um, I, I really think it, it's important to under, you know, underpin the importance of research and underscore the importance of just being in the committee. More information is shared after the committee starts than you know through the whole research process that you come up so if you have your ears open and you you know which teams are bringing up good ideas you uh, kind of you know echo some of their comments and and let them know early on that you want to work with them um and then kind of build on that with some of the you know uh, some of the like insights you might have gathered through your research i think that's the best way to go and not to bog yourself down uh, and stress yourself out before the event. Oh, I think also, ma'am, he has answered your question so very well. Very well. Um, yeah. Shantam, Thanks. you have, uh, you have uh, spoken about research time and again, and I feel as a manner and as an individual also, research plays a major role in our life. So uh, coming from the point of view, like again, I'll come to the point of view from one point of view. Usually I used to guide my children that research is way beyond Wikipedia because uh, for the first time, <laughs> yeah. it just restricts there. So I would like you to highlight like uh, a more on this topic again. How do you think a child should research a first time manner? Because for them, the first page that opens is Wikipedia and their research is yeah. everything that Wikipedia says. Yeah, honestly, I, you know, I, I think that's really interesting that you say research is beyond Wikipedia. That's completely true. Um, not only because everyone looks at Wikipedia, but also because Wikipedia is often incorrect. It is a public source, uh, you know, information provider. And so, you know, I could put in whatever information I wanted and have that stay there for at least until one of the admins take it down. Uh, that being said, I do think Wikipedia is actually a great place to start whenever you, whenever you do start preparing on a subject, just because Wikipedia is so vast, it gives you a flavor of, you know, everything from history to etymology to kind of most impactful scenarios, all of that, right? And then from there, I typically, you know, and, and this goes back to how do educators create a, a template, a framework for their students? Right. I, I've always had my teams um, draft a framework on their screens on, on Word or on paper, whatever they like. And it's situation, action and result. Right. So you want to list out the key points and what you think the key situation is. You list down the key what you think actions should be for this topic. Right. Um, whether that's how do you resolve the topic or how do you get your country's viewpoints forward. And then results you write about what you hope to achieve from, you know, coming out of this committee as a committee, not as a human being, but you know, what you hope to achieve would be the outcome of this committee. And then once you've done your Wikipedia research, you can start kind of jotting down points and then see where the gaps lie. Um, you know, if you have a really good understanding of situation um, and background, you don't you don't necessarily need to use 10 different sources because the history is not necessarily going to change you can use one to validate but you don't have to you know take 10 different viewpoints on the same uh, kind of events but at the same time i think you can quickly narrow down like what are the gaps and then just simply research those to then bolster up what you already have in your arsenal 
So, um, Shantam, since you have a deep knowledge and understanding about each and every aspect and process of Nodal United Nation, how about uh, conducting workshop for man uh, on the top on this topic, man for Indian students in future? So, are you open for that kind of opportunity wherein we can collaborate and uh, our children can also learn from your vast experience? Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, I'm someone who really enjoys to share my experiences and give back. Um, honestly, putting myself in the shoes of uh, either one of the students that we have on the call or uh, one of the educators who, you know, been really impactful in my life. Uh, I, I do think that I've, I've had the fortune to, uh, you know, gather some experiences both in the Indian and the American circuit. So, uh, definitely open to it. Um, I, I also have a hundred hour a week job. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can collaborate and, and see what works out and take it from there. Since, uh, since we have educators here from Dr. Pan Seema India. Lady, uh, yeah, I would like to add on to this. Today morning when I spoke to him, I know him since uh, he was a schoolboy in Kolkata. And when I spoke to him today morning regarding his uh, workshops uh, for the students, and uh, yes. his uh, his say was whatever the contribution comes, he would like to give back to the society for the COVID-19, whatever betterment he could do. So he was very excited with that fact. And I, I really like his approach of giving back to the society with the workshop which he would be conducting. So, that's, that's commendable because if young minds think that, I always say if yeah. young mind, young generation think about these things, I think about uh, empathy and gratitude, I think the world definitely is going to become a better place. We have Anurashri ma'am. Anurashri ma'am, you wanted to ask something. And those who want to ask any question, they can write in the chat box because that, then we will be able to put up all the questions to Shanta. I'm checking the chat box. Rashna, can we have Anurashri, ma'am? Uh, yes, ma'am. Very yes. good morning, Shantam. Hi, good morning. It's a pleasure to hear you in the morning. And thank you so much, <laughs> Rachna, to bring him in the morning. So that's the best dose for the day. Man, the yeah. US time. <laughs> we have to take the time of our guest. And uh, US time, uh, we have to do it. And it, it's the best thing to start a day with. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, correct, correct. Just a simple question, Shantim, that uh, how to ignite the spirit in our students for this? Honestly, I, I well, thank you for your question and your kind words, firstly. Um, honestly, I think students that I've interacted with, you know, across schools are already very passionate about um, organizations like this or, or platforms like this. I think where we lack, and this is coming straight from the heart, right, or, and, and my personal experiences is, is there, there is a culture of, um, you know, really shaming people when they, when they start uh, and not from educators, but from peers, right? And, and it's, it's really about, so for my first experience, if I, if I think back, um, I really felt like you know, if I, if I said something and I made a fool of myself, that would be something that would kind of stick with me until I graduated high school. Um, that typically becomes uh, a common theme when you have a very competitive circuit. And India is, I think, one of the most competitive circuits in the world. And it's a, it's a natural consequence, um, right? That being said, I think what educators can do is you can, so I, I introduced a mentorship model in my, at, at UCLA where um, newcomers would be paired up with someone who has, you know, three or four committees under their belt. And it would be the job of the person who has those, um, those experiences to then kind of team up with the newcomers, talk to them about how they can approach their committees when they do take part in conferences. Um, and, and having that support system um, and someone to validate your ideas, I think, gives you a little more confidence to say, you know, to raise your hand and say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, now, Definitely Shantam, work on this. Yeah. Uh, Shantam, I would like to uh, add on a question, which is uh, there that somebody had mentioned 
I think the chat is public. Just let me have a look. That somebody was debarred. Uh, I was debarred from an Indian committee at Jacob Man for shouting Jai Shri Ram, being a BJP candidate. I think the politics shouldn't come in. Uh, and I told the chair it's part of my allotment, but he said you shouldn't do this in the committee. Was he right or was I right? The honourable chairperson was some Mehta. I stopped, so we shouldn't uh, go personally to somebody. But if you would like, yeah, to I can I can address it. this question broadly, honestly. So yeah. I, you know, um, I, I think that there are times when you know we're encouraged to be in character. We're encouraged to be kind of leaders of whatever committee or whatever party in this case we've been allocated to. But, um, sorry, um, but what, what you can't forget at the end of the day is that you're surrounded by people um, who are real people and who are not, you know, a, a Congress representative. They are not actually a BTP representative. They're just, you know, common everyday people like you and me. So in that case, it is important for us to be sensitive in whatever we speak to everyone around us. I, there's always, you know, you can, you can argue that if you were to go back to, a, you know, have a historical committee where we were talking about like the 18th century, and if, if it was based in the Western civilizations, there are many derogatory terms around, you know, slavery that, that you could pose in the same committee, but that might affect, um, the emotions of you know people from those communities in your committee so, so similarly shouting jay shri ram while you know appreciate that you were um just trying to portray the character which is you know completely understandable um you do have to again think of who am i sitting in the room with could i be offending anyone's uh you know sensitivities and uh feelings and and if so it's better to just avoid so very true, very well you have put up the answer and I think uh, the one who asked question has written that I have understood the answer yes. and, and it's right, we need to maintain the decorum when we are in a committee, we need to be very sensitive about many things which Shantam has already put up. Uh, do we have any other question, Rachna? Oh, there is one question from um, Mr. Danish There was Danish one more Singh. question. Yeah. Hmm? This okay. question is, did you experience any discrimination? But I think we can quickly take in the this month, question. In the USA, hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, did yeah, you experience any? Yeah, you hmm. got it, now. So you. Yeah. yeah so I think the question is is asking about any kind of discriminations or or racism that I might have encountered um, during my experience in the U.S. So firstly, I want to let all the educators and and all people know that. Uh, you know, racism and discrimination is not prevalent in the U.S., especially in in colleges and universities where people are coming to learn and grow their perspectives. I think people from all different races and cultures are supported and, um, you know, really, uh, I, I think if, if there are any, if there are instances when uh, people try to propagate any racist uh, actions, then they're reprimanded and, and called a bigot by other people around you. So, you know, you never have to worry about racism and discrimination here. Um, the other thing I will say is we are very lucky to be Indians. Uh, you know, I think Indians have great representation in uh, positions of power all across the world, and especially in the U.S. If you think of, you know, how many companies you can name that have um, Indian CEOs from, you know, Indira to you, you can just, the list is um, endless. So we have a very good reputation in the US. We're generally looked at as, you know, heads of finance, heads of industry, um, and heads of science here. So, uh, you know, you, you generally don't face any uh, such problems in, in college and university, and even after. So, um, Shantam, we are really very, very proud of you. You are a proud Indian who is making us proud. So I just want a quick concluding remark from you. And um, where do you see yourself after 10 years? And any kind of <laughs> guideline that you want to give to the audience or any kind of advice that you want to give to the audience for a better tomorrow? Sure. Um, you know, honestly, seeing how many people have joined in for this conversation is... Uh, it's overwhelming and 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm just filled with a lot of gratitude. Um, all I can say really is that um, don't be nervous or scared to take on these opportunities uh, as they come your way. You will, you know, throughout your life, you will be in a position where you have to step out of your comfort zone and you have to kind of take a stance or you have to try to work with people. And um, Model UN is just a great way for you to start developing those skills at a young age. Um, you know, coming out of your comfort zone is, is one of the ways that you start to expand your comfort zone. And um, if you want to be a leader in the future, which, you know, everyone showed in their own way, um, that, that's the best way to do it. Go, go heads, heads first. Just take a dive and see how it feels. Lovely. That was a lovely remark. And uh, to add to what Shantam said, I don't think there is any part of the world where Indians are not ruling. He has taken the names of you uh, some time back. So we are Indian proud. We are very, very proud of ourselves and we are the born leaders. The only thing is we need to ignite that drive inside us and then follow our passion. It was wonderful talking to you, Shantam. Thank you, audience. They have asked so many questions and the kind of response that we have seen in the chat box. Thank you, Rashna, for organizing this talk. It was very, very enriching and enlightening. Thank you so much from my end. Thank you, Shantam. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, Shantam, we are not over. Thank you, Shantam and Dr. Seema Negi, ma'am, for uh, being the speaker and the moderator and taking this uh, talk show to an another level. And we always look for much more learning from about month from you, Shantam Jain. All I can do, say is each one of us has the capability and potential to do the possible and the impossible. Only sincere effort and determination is required. And you have proved that, Shantam. The sky is only not the limit. It's beyond that too. Stretch, reach out, jump, run, bend. And on this positive note, I would like to sign up for today with a virtual greet and a virtual hug from pan-India educators, parents, and students. Stay safe, stay healthy. And a uh, namaste from all of us, from Tushantam Jain, and Kusum ma'am, and Thank Seema Negi ma'am. Thank you so much, Shantam. Thank you. And Shantam, I would Thank just you, like everyone. to... I would just like to add you one thing. Many of the viewers couldn't uh, join in due to some network yeah, glitches. And today uh, we had gone every live. And over more than 5,000 viewers will be able to reach you out on, through every live also. So that's a, that's a very big accomplishment. Thank you, Shantam. And we look forward for many more association with you. Thank you. Yeah. Namaste. Thank you so much for Thank having you. me. Letters. Thank you. Let yeah. us uh, say bye with the namaste. Yeah. Signing off for today. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.